Okay, time to start um, part one of uh, lecture one of week five of the Domain Specific Languages of Mathematics course. And this is actually a little left over from uh, section 461 in the book, so which actually sort of and then chapter four should be week four. But week four has a little too much material compared to week five, so this has been left for this week. So uh, this is a bit of live coding, uh, but quite a bit of the code is actually filled in already. So it'd be a little bit like talking through slides and ex showing examples, because I don't want to reinvent the things that we've been implementing already. Um, and here, also related to a question I got last week, uh, I should not hide too much about these uh, magical language pragmas, which are usually at the top of the file. So I have two here, flexible context and rebindable syntax. So the second one is about being able to use uh, the numeric literals for the other type classes for numerics that we're using instead of the prelude ones. So that they can use um, well, reasonably simple combination of mathematics and um, the Haskell prelude or my version of the Haskell prelude. Okay, and then importing now uh, a module called FunExp, which defines a data type for functional expressions of one variable. The one I've been sort of implementing and re-implementing several times to show different aspects of computing derivatives and evaluating and so on. I also have a separate module where there are instances uh, for suitable type classes and this syntax importing and then a list which is empty uh, means that I don't import any usual names. I just import the type class instances from there. Then I'm importing a little helper function called simplify, which is algebraic simplifications of this fun exp data type. So for example, uh, if I call simplify on x times Okay, I have the syntax x const, x const 0, then I get const 0. So, and const 1, then I get just x, and so on. If I say const 2 times const 1, I just get const 2. And the reason for importing this is that the, when you when computing some more complicated things like derivatives, you very often get expressions which are unreadable just due to the fact that syntactic, simply simple derivative computations will make the terms grow. And then often with simple simplification rules, you can shrink them down to something more readable. So the type of simplify is just funexp to funexp. Um, okay, I import the prelude qualified so that I have access to all the prelude functions, but only if I write prelude dots. And then just a small selection of definitions from the prelude are allowed to sort of seep through into the namespace of this module. And then I've collected these classes additive, multiplicative, add group, mul group, ring, field. Those have all been collected in an module called algebra so that uh, I don't have to re-implement those classes and that that will be important for most of the code from now on in the course. So it's worth noting if we if you uh, download the github repository that in the directory l of the github repository as I can show here it has a subdirectory called dsl so math and that in turn contains all those Haskell files like algebra, um, which then has the hierarchical namespace of so DSL, so math directory, algebra mod module. And that defines these things that I was talking about last week, like multiplication, subtraction, division, and so on, and the classes, and also some other helper functions. I think the only one we haven't talked about before that I will use this time is the power of um see to the power of here so i i define this operator for any multiplicative a and an int as exponents i compute the iterated multiplication with this int and it's it's a sort of an efficient 
multiplication. So if it's a high exponent, it would just square several times. But that's just for, for you to good to know that you can find these algebra module uh, and you can download it from GitHub and you can use it, for example, in the bigger exercises and, and uh, projects. Okay, I should not have changed that file, so okay. And then back to the live code. So that was the last of the import. Now let's do some more work on the domain specific language of functions derivatives. That's the heading here. And there are two main topics, the semantics of FunExp and a homomorphism. So two semantics of FunExp, so two different ways of evaluating it and a homomorphism between those two, which I will call apply FD and some numeric type class instances for a type called by, which we have mentioned briefly earlier, but I will talk more about here. Okay, that's the intro. And then point zero is a little bit of a reminder of what was in of all of those modules that we use here. So first, as I mentioned, the data type FunExp. So I've defined it um, several times. Here, it's a version which uses infix constructors colon plus colon and colon times colon uh, for add and mul and then const x negate and some more constructors like sine cosine and so on which are not covered today um, i'm also importing from this uh, fun x data type uh, from module the eval function and here it says that for any ring i can evaluate a fun x to a function from a to a Remember, ring I introduced in the previous one is something where you have addition, subtraction, a zero, and multiplication, and a one, but you don't have division. Okay, and then we have the class additive, class multiplicative, and the add group. So those together is defines this ring. Um, and you may remember that the function that computes a syntactic derivative is not a homomorphism by itself, that we needed a pair of a function plus the derivative to make it a homomorphism. And that I think was uh, der2, it was called, called der2 earlier. Okay, so then we can go to the actual start of the coding. So here we have two different but related semantics of FunX. One is FDA, FD for function and derivative, and the other is function from A to by A. So let's look at first these two types. So I've in the book described them as just pairs, but when you start working on the Haskell code and you have two different kinds of pairs at the same time, it's better to give them to define them using new types because then Haskell will be able to distinguish these types and won't give you lots of type error messages with overlapping instances and so on. So FD is a pair of two functions from A to A and by is a two values. So actually a special case of by, I can write that in a comment here, or I can make a, an FD prime of A could be defined as by of A arrow A. So this would be isomorphic to FD of A. But I'm trying to sort of keep track of which is which here, so I will uh, not define it in that way to avoid confusion, but I will keep the two new types separate. Let's just make sure that we're keeping ourselves straight here. So here is the function that I'm claiming uh, can be used to build homomorphisms. So what I'm claiming here is that for any constant c, the partially applied function apply fdc is a homomorphism from mal fd to mal bi. So this is a type, it takes an a, actually a doesn't have to be of any numeric type or any kind, and then this fda is as I said a pair of functions, and by is a pair of values and its implementation is not very surprising. So it takes a constant and then it takes an FD and an FD is always a pair of a function F, you can call them F and G. And then it has to be a by of something comma something. And um, 
here we found a hole and the relevant things we could be using here are f and g. So let's use f and apply it to our constant. And then let's use g and apply it to our constant here. So now we've got something which type checks and um, which is sort of a um, rather natural transformation. So if we have a pair of functions and we want to know what their values are at the same point c, then we just evaluate f on c and g on c. Okay, so just illustrate what we intend this to be for. I mentioned up here in the comment that this should be a function intended to be sort of storing a function and its derivative. And similarly, this is intended to store a position so the value of the function evaluates to and some speed. So the derivative at that specific point. So that's the intention. I mean, the data types themselves don't know anything about this. So it's up to us to implement it in such a way that that interpretation is correct. So here I want to implement, as it says, by hand an FD. So this should be of type FD. And then it should have one component here and another component over here. And well, what types do we have? Well, both should be functions. And the first should be this function. That's the intention at least. So let's just splice it in. And then I thought by hand, it means we can compute the derivative ourselves. So we have to insert here a Lambda expression that takes x to and then the derivative that we compute. So x minus 1 squared, then 2 times x minus 1 is the derivative. So 2 times x minus 1. So of course, or maybe not of course, but Haskell does not know anything about this being derivatives and so on, so we will not check. We could have lied and put whatever we want there, which would cause confusion later. But this is just to, to sort of see that we understand what this type is doing. And as you notice, if I try to evaluate fd1, well, it's a function, so we can't really show it. Uh, we need to value up to apply it to. So this is actually a good uh, case for to first use of the apply fd. So if we want to apply an fd, we use apply fd, say at point zero of fd1. And now you can see we get a by that's what I apply fd is returning. And the by returns to the first position the value of the first component of fd1 applied to 1, and the other is the second component applied, or applied to 0, and the second component applied to 0. So let's see, this is the function x minus 1, so it's 0 minus 1 is minus 1 squared, and that's 1. That seems reasonable. And then here it's 2 times x minus 1, so 0 minus 1 is minus 1 times 2, is minus 2. Okay, so we have tested that this function, oh well, we, we tested it on one value. If we insert 1, we should get 0 and 0, because that's x minus 1 is, is uh, sort of has a minimum of this function there, so both the function value is 0 and its derivative is also 0. And if we apply 2, it's by symmetry, um, the function value is the same as in, in 0, but its derivative is the opposite, it's going up again. Okay, so that's a concrete use of the apply FD function is, is this. And the fact that it has this property we'll be talking about later. Okay, next step, implement X. I put that in quote as an FD. So what I mean by this? Well, the intention is that XFD could be used in the semantics of the capital X in the fun X data type. So if I write an evaluator from uh, fun x to the type fd, this should be returned. So it's an fd value, it has two components, and the first, as we know from earlier, should be the identity function, so lambda x arrow x. And the second should be a function which always returns um, 1. The derivative is constant 1 of the identity function. So const 1 seems like a reasonable case. Oops. Okay, and now it complains because remember I'd imported the prelude uh, qualified. So to be able to actually use this one, I'll need to 
well, I could qualify it, but let's just import const. Okay. Back down here. So now we implemented two different uh, XDs sort of by hand. I don't know why it jumped here. XFD. Um, and in both cases, they are parameterized over any ring A here. So, I mean, when I've tried it, I've tried it for our A being double, but it could also be used um, for lots of other instances. We'll maybe check a bit on that later. So next step here is to implement a function, this, this function, um, sort of generically. So here I've defined a function e2, which takes x and returns x minus 1 up to the power of 2. So this, this was the operator I defined in the algebra module. It's just repeated multiplication. So let's see uh, if I use e2 on a number like 2, or um, then I get a, a number out. Uh, but if I use it on something more interesting, like in the next case here, um, if I want to get an FD out, I want to get, so this is sort of a, a generic implementation. Now I want to force it to be an FD. So then I apply this function to my X FD. So notice this one takes any ring and X FD is an example that should uh, implement the ring type class. So let's see what E2 FD is. Well, okay, it's an FD, and that means it has a pair of functions, which is again a little bit difficult to show. So that's why I have the test function here. Test2 takes a constant C and applies the E to FD, uh, applies uh, the, these two functions to the same constant C. So that's test2, our function on zero. Now test2, our function on zero, one, two, three and so on. Okay, so we seem to get the same result out of this one as we did when we sort of hand implemented. But here we haven't noticed, we haven't explicitly said how to compute the derivative of this function. We just used the x here and the instance for multiplication of, uh, uh, of the type class. So that instance apparently did the right work for, for computing this derivative. It might look a bit magical, so let's see if we ask it for the syntactic form, because you know how we have an instance for syntax as well, and that's what I'm doing here. So here we have the generic test2. It will give a, a value, a number out if we want to, but we can also apply it to x. So notice x here is a fun exp. So what is test2 applied to x? Okay, here is an example where you see the need for the simplify function. So of course we could analyze what it says here and it could be all be explained by following the different cases of the derivative computation. But instead, to get a little more readable, let's first define a little helper function. Actually, I've already defined it, but I can show the helper function simpy. So it takes by funx to by funx, but just applies to the syntax tree f and syntax tree f prime the function simplify that I mentioned earlier. So simplify applies to the first and second components of the by. Okay, so I apply this, then I got this uh, this value simp by of test two of x, and that's a little shorter. It's not as very short, so let's analyze it. I can put it here in the um, in the comment. So there should be a comma somewhere. There is the comma. We can line them up. So what does it say? Well, it says, uh, now I, I will sort of um, take it apart so we see perhaps better. Let's let's keep it as it is and then take it apart. So I'll, I'll instead of const one, I'll just write one. And instead of colon plus, I'll write plus. So this is minus two times x plus x times x, which I will write x squared. 
Okay, let's see if this is now sufficiently readable. Okay, so that this means that the first component of y is 1 minus 2x plus x squared. And this seems to be nicely corresponding to a simplified form of this. So I can say, yes, matches, well, the simplified form of this. Okay, and the other component, that is actually minus 2 plus... 2 times, oh, yeah, we, we can remove some parentheses, 2 times x, and let's put that parentheses in. Okay, so minus 2 plus 2 times x, well, we could say yes, it matches the 2 times x minus 1, at least if I swap the order here. So 2 times x and 2 times minus 1 is minus 2 plus 2x. Okay, so interestingly, we've been able to here with the right instances to compute the function value and its derivative or the syntax tree representing the function value and the syntax tree of the derivative, depending on the type we give to pi here. So when we do pi fun exp, we get the syntax tree out. And in the other case, we got the value out. So that can be quite useful for, for um, testing and computing with symbolic values sometimes. Okay, so uh, yeah, this this is list two is uh, just uh, showing that we can evaluate it at several points if we want to get to some basis for drawing a, a, a graph or something like that and count up is help just a helper function that iterates um, one plus. Okay, so I had. Let's get rid of this one. I had an xfd above. So an xfd. And now I'm going to start to move towards the by that type. And I want to see, can I write the corresponding value, which I call here x by? We should, we should have the same kind of uh, purpose. So remember, I was saying that from the very beginning, uh, I wanted two different but related semantics of fun exp, either as two functions or as one function returning a by a. So this here is this one function returning a by a variant of it. So this should take an x and then it should return a by of two components. And the first should then be sort of the value of the identity function at x, which is definitely x, and the second should be the value of the derivative of the constant of the identity function at x, and the derivative here is always 1. Okay, so now we implemented something uh, on the function level, xfd, and something on the sort of by level, x by. That can be useful uh, in the transition later. Okay, and these instances that I've already written beforehand uh, are based on what we did in the previous lectures. Now it's just cat caught up in this FD data type. And I wanted to uh, remind you that when it comes to addition, derivative is purely additive. So we add the function component, but we also add the derivative component. They are sort of independently added. Uh, worth noting here that as this is an FD, that means that both F and G are actually functions from A to A, also F prime and G prime. So this plus here is not the sort of bottom level plus, but it's a plus on on the function level. And it's actually additive, or additive A to this. This is the plus that it's used on the right hand side here. So we sort of the different instances use, use each other. Negate just calls negate on both arguments. That's also negate on functions. Zero is just a com, com, combination of two zeros. But here we have to be uh, careful. So the one function, it's constant one, and its derivative is constant zero. 
So as usual, we're keeping this invariant that the first component is the function we're implementing and the second component is the derivative of the function we're implementing. And then the only case which does something a little more interesting is the multiplicative case. And notice here, we're using the ring type class context. Uh, so if I would try to say just multiplicative here and then load it, then it would complain and say, hmm, I couldn't deduce additive from the use of addition. Because notice, multiplication, derivative of uh, the, the multiplication actually uses addition. So I need more than just multiplicative. And the standard solution is to use ring here, even though it would be enough to say just multiplicative and additive for this particular one. Okay, so these are the functions um, which together build up an instance for FD. So having an instance for FD means that we can evaluate any fun exp and that we have a uh, actually a ring homomorphism that goes from the syntax to the FD data type. Okay, and then the question is, can we do something similar? Oh, no, I should have seen, had the instances here. Uh, okay, so the instances for FD are there, and down here we should see what the instances for by are. So I'm using this pattern as before that I'm uh, only giving names in the instance declarations. So addition is add by, multiplication is mul by, and so on. And as I mentioned several times, the reason is partly because I want to test them separately, and partly because I want to force having to write the type of the function. So if we have the type available, it's also easier to see if it, if, if we can write the type there, it's easier to see give, for Haskell to give us feedback on what we'd like to. So what we would like here is that apply FDC this could be a homomorphism from mal FD to mal by. So this should do something in such a way that this uh, H2 predicate is satisfied. I should just clear up here because this, this now has loaded. Okay, and to fill this in, um, we can use some reasoning. So I will actually here go down a little bit and try to talk through a step-by-step -step proof. So let's move most of it a little bit down and we can hide this one and make this one smaller. So the purpose here is to define mal fd or rather mal by in terms of mal fd. So first, uh, what do what does H2 expand to? So it expands to for all pairs FD1 and FD2. Maybe make it easier to read. So apply FDC, that was the one function H, we should see if it's a homomorphism. Doing that after the multiplication should be the same as first doing apply C and then doing a multiplication. So we're looking here for, so we can say here, what mal by could make this work? Question mark. And I would like to apply step by step only the laws we already know from the definitions. And sometimes helpful steps is to name something. So first of all, by type driven development, we know that FD1 must have the shape FD of f and f prime. f of f prime are names we choose, but it has this shape. It's an fd constructor and a pair of two functions. Similarly with fd2. So that's what I'm, um, I'm, I'm sort of, yeah, okay, I, I should say, I'm starting here from this part of the expression. So I'm starting from the right hand side. So uh, say start from the from the right hand side. Okay, step one uh, is to expand these two. Uh, actually, step one is here. And then we get to um, 
a slightly longer expression, but if I indent this, we can see that, that they correspond. So this is just the apply FD2, and this is the apply FD1. And I've used FF prime and GG prime instead. And why did I do this? Well, because we want to look now up here at the definition, if we can split this further, at the definition of apply FD. So that's a one-liner, but it has this shape, so then we wanted to sort of expose this shape. So we can see that this expression can be used together with the definition of apply FD to get a by instead. So now we eliminated apply FD, we simplified apply FD applied here, and similarly for the second argument to mul by. So mul by, by definition of apply FD is now this stage. So we're continuing here by equational reasoning. Each step is motivated by reason, definition of apply FD in this case. And it's often the case when doing this kind of equality chains that we got a little bit too much information. So it's easier to see in the structure if we hide some of it. So here I'm just creating new names. I'm creating the name X for this first component and X prime for the second. And similarly here Y and Y prime. So I'm writing this just to be a little bit um, shorter and, and see... Um, how to go further from there. And at this stage, um, I want to start on the other direction as well. So here we take a break uh, in the computation and start from below, from the other end. Okay, so starting from the other end means down here. So the other end, if you remember, was apply FDC, mal FD, FD1, FD2. So that was the very uh, end of the computation. And that's, um, yeah. Well, anyway, we'll just keep track of where, where my cursor is. So mal FD, and here is similarly, FD1 is just has this shape, FD of FF prime. And, oh, it should be FD of gg prime. Okay, good. Okay, so then we've, we've uh, so expand definition of fd1 and fd2 from above. That's what I'm doing to go in from that step up here. Maybe I should indent these again so we can see the correspondence. This is fd2 and this is fd1. And then it's definition of mal fd and that we had up here. So that takes two of these and combines them into one according to the standard derivative rule. Well, the standard derivative rule is the second component. The first component is just the same as the function itself. So now we're getting down to an invisible FD constructor here. So this is the third step. And then is again where we can use apply FD from this other direction. So apply FD of an FD, then we know we can make a by of it. So by of this function F times G apply to C, and this function F times G prime plus F prime plus G, no, times G apply to C. So we're just using here up again the definition of apply FD. Okay, then we know that when we have multiplication for functions and then apply it to C. That's the same of, as applying it to C in both cases and using the normal multiplication. So notice the type of multiplication that my cursor is at right now is the A level multiplication, but down here it's the function level multiplication. So I pushed the C constant to all four places on the right hand side here. Okay, and then I've used using the names. Let's make this a little more visible, perhaps. I line up the multiplication signs, the addition, and the multiplication, and the end parentheses. So this is just FC times G prime C, and so on. X times Y prime, X prime times Y. Okay, now let's try to shrink this hole and see what is the last step. 
So we, we to make the proof go through, this expression, which I can copy down here, this has to be equal to this expression. So question mark, can we make these two the same? Well, the thing is, as I mentioned, we are looking for some mal bi which could make this work. So mal bi isn't defined yet. We should define it. And here we're saying if mal bi satisfies this property, then we're done. The proof goes through. And this property is exactly of the shape of a functional definition. Mal bi takes two arguments. They are both by, so we know they have to be by of xx prime, y y prime for some values. And then we can just, instead of saying question mark here, we can give this as the definition. So at some, so somewhere we had the code for mal bi. So let's take this one and look for it. Mal bi. It just said equal error to do. So then instead of error to do, we just splice in this code. And then we can, I guess, get rid of some unnecessary spacing for this context. And try to load it. And yes, it works out. So we have now defined a multiplication for bi, which is very similar to the multiplication for fd. In fact, if I put these next to each other, we can see that apart from naming x, f, g, y, f prime. Okay, let's see. This is the opposite order here, but if we swap, it should be the same order. Uh, and addition is um, commutative, so that should work. So with swapping the order, we can see that it's very similar. The only thing basically differing here is the types. So here we're talking about values of type A, while in the upper case we're talking about functions from A to A. So the same code, you could say, works in both cases. And that is not an accident. This apply function is so simple that it really sort of, for these numerical instance classes, just you can copy the code, which means that also the add function here is going to be uh, very similar. It's by of the pair x plus y, x prime plus y prime. And similarly, for, for these cases. So we have a by x, x prime, and it's a by negate x, negate x prime. So one, one should be careful not to, to do it sort of too blindly though. I mean, we should think what it means. I mean, addition, it's linear. A derivative is linear, so we should just add them. Uh, linear also means that if you multiply by minus one, we should also multiply both the function and its derivative by minus one. Uh, the zero should be definitely very much zero. And the one case, that's one, or sorry, one is the function and the derivative is zero. Okay, so now I think we filled in all the instances for also the by case, which means that we should be able to um, use expressions in the type class. I mean, the, the, the type class now, the type class for rings here has these operations like plus and times. So we can write um, x, so we can write the function, for example, x to x times x plus um, 1 minus x. Okay, this is sort of a generic expression which should work for, for all of these uh, types. And if you want to apply this function to an uh, to something of the by type, say the x by, okay, then we get this function from a to by a. So we should probably apply it to some concrete value, one, say. Okay, then this is trying to tell us that the function that I implemented, which I haven't checked what it's doing, x squared plus one minus x, uh, x squared plus 1, that's 2 minus 1, that's 1. And its derivative is 2 times x minus 1. So that seems to be also correct. So given only the definition, 
you can here have another x uh, of the function it will compute the value of the function and the value and the value of its derivative sort of automatically um, so this is one way of doing what is called automatic differentiation in different settings so we're, we're sort of implementing working with pairs of numbers so instead of working with just one number we in, we work with the number and its derivative at this point and uh, this combination gives the possibility to just uh, describe functions in this limited data type and in this limited language domain specific languages that that ring uh, class is matching but in that uh, language we can compute both the function value and its derivative Okay, so if we go up to the top again and see what have we done, we've implemented uh, two different semantics of FunExp, or at least we implemented the targets of it and the instances. So uh, the FD of A, we put pairs of functions, and well, I can show it here, the pairs of functions and the function from A to by A, where we just get a position and speed at each point. And uh, to get there, we also defined these numeric class instances for by, which were basically forced by the instances we had for FD, or the opposite. If we decide for one of them, we have to do the other one in the corresponding way. Okay, that was all for this part. Um, next part is on Jamboard.